Before we get into the calculus of uh, logarithms and exponential functions, I want to spend a little time just reviewing our, uh, uh, the rules we know about logarithms and how they work together. So first off, what is the logarithm? So if I write log base b of x equals y. Now, this is talking about the inverse of an exponential function. So what I'm saying, if I um, unpack this, I'm saying that b raised to the y power, so b raised to the y power, is equal to x. So in other words, what I'm saying is that if log base b of x equals y, then b raised to the y power is equal to x. They're inverses of each other. And this gives rise to um, plenty of, of useful things, right? That uh, I'm just taking this right here tells me that b raised to the log base b of x is equal to x. Right? Notice all I did, here's what how y defined. y is defined as log base b of x. If I know b to the y equals x, so replacing log base b of x into there, I get b raised to the log base b of x equals x. Similarly, that uh, um, log base b of b to the y is equal to y. Why should that, that be? Well, <laughs> take the value for x here and put it in and replace it with b sub y in our expression here. This gives us that log base b of b to the y, log base b of b to the y, is equal to y, equal to y. So these are our key identities of being inverses, that the logarithm undoes exponentiation, and exponentiation undoes logarithm. So that's our basic idea of logarithms, um, how they're tied in with exponential functions. Now let's derive a couple, um, actually exactly three rules uh, that should be in your back pocket in regards to logarithms. You've seen this before, but I'm just going to derive it again so that it, you can, um, you know, ideally you, you can remember this process to give you some sense of why the logarithms are even true. So we first start off with some setup. So we'll say that, um, uh, let's say alpha is equal to log base b of u, and beta is equal to log base b of v. So we're just defining two different logarithms, and um, now I want to see, well, what is the logarithm of u times v? So I know that the logarithm of u times v, say, is equal to um, m. Well, whoops, I forgot my base. All right, so log base b of u times v. That's equal to some number. And of course, if it's equal to that number, means b raised to that number is equal to u v. So b to the m is equal to u v. But what is u v equal to? Well, coming back up to here, uh, we again, this tells us that that b raised to the alpha power, so b raised to the alpha power 
is equal to u. Similarly, b raised to the beta power is equal to v. So let me write that over here, that we know that u is equal to b raised to the alpha power, and v is equal to b raised to the beta power. Okay, so that's what u and v are, so that means b to the m equals u to the v, so b to the m is equal to b to the alpha times b to the beta. But when I multiply the same base, that's the same as adding exponents, so I get that b to the m is equal to b to the alpha plus beta. Now, if I've got a number raised to m and the same number raised to alpha plus beta and they're equal, the only way that can happen is if m is equal to alpha plus beta. But remember, log m was our log base u of v, alpha is log u, beta is log v, so now we get the famous rule that log base b of u v is equal to log of u plus log of v. And now that's a rule. You've seen it before. This is not, let me get my bases in there, sorry. Um, you've seen it before in algebra and pre-calculus over and over again. I know you've seen this rule. You might have forgotten it. Remember, products become addition. Why? Because in exponents, products become addition. For almost identical reasons, we can look at what division is. So let's say that d is equal to log base b of u divided by v. Well, if you had to guess, remember that in um, exponents, division becomes subtraction, so it shouldn't be surprising. So we get that um, b to the d, right, using our rules, that b raised to the d power has to be equal to u over v. So this is equal to u divided by v. But what is u and v? That's equal to b to the alpha divided by b to the beta. And like I said, division with exponents becomes subtraction. So this is b to the alpha minus beta. And again, just like the argument here, if b to the d is equal to b to the alpha minus beta, then we know that d, so I'm going to actually remind you what d is, log based b of u over v is our d, that it has to be equal to alpha minus beta, but that is alpha log v u, beta log v v, so this is log base u, or log base b of u, minus log base b of v. And you could walk through the same derivations. Um, I've run out of board space here, um, as well as I don't want to take up all your time. So remind you of the final rule that we have for exponents, that log based b of u raised to the exponent power is exactly the same as v times log based v b of u. So if I have an exponent inside the logarithm, I can simplify it or by pulling it out and making a constant, or vice versa, if I have a constant in front of my logarithm, I could bring it into the function as an exponent. 
Again, you should be able to follow kind of the path that I just did and do your appropriate substitutions and see exactly that this will work out based on the um, rules of exponents.